So, first things first, let's power on the monitor. There we go, everything is working properly. Secondly, power supply for the Key Digital CTC A3. There we go. As such, that is a DSA 0151F. Dash six A. It's expecting six volt DC out, two point five amp. Let's go ahead and plug that in. From here, said transcoder. Plug, apply, said transcoder. There we go. Let's flip that around. And we supply power. There we go, nice power LED. Now taking a look at that. We have VGA input near my thumb. Opposite it is the VGA output. This is a pass-through device that allows you to use VGA in from, say, a PC, Dreamcast, or any other standard VGA input, VGA source, and it will automatically switch between your transcoded content and the source content. No switching no uh, input from the user necessary. Now, we have the end of a HD15 to 5BNC cable. This is currently hooked up to the rear of the FW. This is going to go into our VGA output. There we go. Get one screw in there just to hold that nice in. Now we notice here there is an input and an output for the component. This will allow you to chain this uh, device. Any source coming in will also come out so you can still monitor the video coming in as YPBPR. All right, so now we have the device powered and hooked up to the monitor, but we do not have an input yet. For this I'm going to be using the digital out of my GameCube. We have nice three cables coming off of a D-terminal breakout. These are going to go into the transcoder's input. We have green to Y, PB gets the blue cable, and PR goes there. This is now, in theory, able to send a signal off to our monitor. I'll place that down there. Now, this monitor has a switch on the front for switching between the two inputs. That being HD15 VGA for input one, which we are currently on, and the BNC input, input two. The monitor is working, it doesn't see a signal. So let's power up our GameCube. The boot is at 480i, 15.7 kilohertz. The monitor can't do anything with this signal, but let's give it a moment.
there we go. And we are now loaded into Swiss, which I have set to default to 480p. From here, let's go down to GVISR. And let's see. Let's give that a shot. There we go. Working all perfectly fine and good. And now I'll take this moment to show off the detect signal LED. We have green on the left signaling that it has power, and we have red on the right signaling that it is seeing a source. Now we will hit this. When running in 24120, the monitor really doesn't know what to do. It's not used to, it's not expecting to receive such a low resolution signal. So the OSD does get chopped off. But if you notice, you do see at the bottom 3.15 just ever so barely and 1 point, uh, 119 hertz. Whenever the GameCube is outputting one, uh, 120 hertz for GBI, it comes off to a fractional bit. I believe it's something along the lines of 119.7. But as you can see, the monitor is working properly. As is the transcoder. Nice, clean, and smooth. Bright and vibrant. Now I must say, personally, it is a small bit of a waste to use such a, I don't want to use the term rare, but uh, coveted monitor as an FW900 for Game Boy games or even just things that aren't properly going to make use of its widescreen aspect ratio. A any number of 4x3 monitors will look absolutely fine for this. And actually I would say it would be a tad better due to the simple fact that you're not going to have to risk with heavy usage possibly burning in the tube unevenly. That is a definite risk with window boxing like this. However, you would have to leave it on quite a long time in this uh, set up in order to uh, get any sort of sizable burn-in notice. I'm talking hours and with static images. And with that, I will drop this back so that it's a bit more visible. And that is really all there is to it.